Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Sultai self mill deck titled Silver Surfer, as we're playing with Silver Smoke Ghoul from M21, the 3 mana 3 1 zombie vampire, that at the beginning of our end step, if we gained 3 or more life this turn, we get to return from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped, and for 1 and a black, we can also sacrifice the ghoul to draw a card. So, nice recursive threat that can keep coming back from the graveyard over and over again, and if it's about to die, we can simply sacrifice it and still draw a card. And to help us enable Silver Smoke Ghoul, we're playing Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. That's where the surfer part of the deck name comes from, as Uro will gain the three life necessary to return the ghoul from the graveyard to the battlefield, in addition to drawing a card and putting a land card from our hand onto the battlefield, and then later we can escape it from the graveyard for double green and double blue by exiling five other cards from our graveyard, and then whenever Uro enters the battlefield or attacks, it will trigger all those abilities once again. So at the center of the deck it's really an Uro and Silver Smoke Ghoul deck, and you'll notice a lot of similarities with last week's Grixis Titan Shift deck, as we're also playing the Lazav combo. So turn 1 we can potentially mill an Uro in the graveyard with a Secret Keeper or Supplier, turn 2 we can play Lazav, and on turn 3 we can activate Lazav's ability, turning it into an Uro for 3 mana, and then it can potentially be attacking as a 6-6 and gaining a bunch of life and drawing a bunch of cards, potentially returning ghouls from the graveyard as well. So that's a very powerful combo that this deck has available. But it does have a lot of differences with the Grixis Titan Shift deck as well. We're not playing Priests of Forgotten Gods and some of the same sacrifice synergies. But one card that we are including in this week's video is Creeping Chill as another great enabler for Silver Smoke Ghoul. A 4 mana sorcery that deals 3 damage to each opponent and we gain 3 life. And when Creeping Chill is put into our graveyard from our library, we can exile it, and if we do, Creeping Chill deals 3 damage to each opponent, and we gain 3 life. So essentially, if we mill Creeping Chill, we can play it for free, which means that on turn 1, we could already return a Silver Smoke Ghoul from the graveyard, if we happen to mill it alongside a Creeping Chill, so that can lead to some very explosive starts. So let's take a look at the entire deck list. At 1 mana, we've got our Merfolk Secret Keeper that can mill the top 4 cards with the Venture Deeper Adventure, and then afterwards we still get a 1 mana 04, and Stitcher Supplier, a 1 mana 1 1 zombie that mills the top 3 cards when it enters a battlefield or dies. Now we don't have as many sacrifice outlets as we did in last week's Titan Shift deck to sacrifice a supplier and put more cards in the graveyard, but we do still have a good use for the supplier even if it doesn't die as it counts as a zombie, and we do have a bit of zombie synergy as we'll find out in a second. Then at 2 mana we've got our Lazav, which also surveils one when it enters the battlefield, so it can potentially put more stuff into the graveyard. And then of course combos with our Uro, turning into the 6-6 Elder Giant. And Lazav will have a different name than Uro, so we can have Lazav as an Uro plus a normal Uro on the battlefield at the same time. Then we've got the full playset of Charter Course to draw two, and then we have to discard a card unless we've attacked this turn. Sometimes we actively want to discard cards if we have a Silver Smoke Ghoul stuck in hand, for instance. We're happy just discarding it so we can get it back from the graveyard for free instead. And then other times we can just use this as a two mana draw two. Then at three mana we've got our Ghoul, and then another great enabler to put a bunch of cards in the graveyard is Timurit Calls the Dead, a three mana saga, and on the first two chapters we mill the top three cards, and then we can exile a creature or enchantment card from our graveyard, and if we do we get to make a 2-2 black zombie creature token, and on the third chapter we gain X life and scry X, where X is the number of zombies we control, so this can potentially enable the Silver Smoke Ghoul, and also just helps us assemble the various combos in the deck by setting up our next draw with the scry, and then that's also where the Stitcher Supplier comes in handy. Both the Supplier, the zombie tokens from Timurit Calls the Dead, and Silver Smoke Ghoul are all zombies, so they can all help us scry with Timurit Calls the Dead. Then we also have two copies of Demonic Embrace, a 3 mana enchantment aura that gives the enchanted creature plus 3, plus 1 and flying, and is also a demon in addition to its other types, and we can cast the Embrace from our graveyard by paying 3 life and discarding a card in addition to the other costs, so that's another way of potentially discarding a ghoul that's stuck in our hands, but more importantly it's a way to give our Uro flying. There's a lot of matchups, thinking of Feel of the Dead decks, where the opponent's gonna have a bunch of ground blockers, and we just need a way to give our Uro a bit of evasion, so we can start chipping in in the air, 
and Demonic Embrace is a great way to do that, as we'll randomly mill it and get access to it from the graveyard, so we don't even need to draw it to potentially cast it. And then we've got our full playset of Uro, which is definitely the centerpiece of the deck. And finally we've got our four copies of Creeping Chill and two copies of Liliana, Waker of the Dead. That gives us access to a bit of removal, since otherwise we're not really killing the opponent's stuff all that much. So with the minus three, target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of cards in our graveyard. And we've got a lot of ways to put stuff in the graveyard, so that's usually going to be enough to kill any creature. And then the plus one makes each player discard a card, and each opponent who can't loses three life. And again, sometimes we're happy just discarding cards anyway, so the plus one can be beneficial for us and then the minus seven can also be game winning. And then taking a look at our mana base, we don't have any basic swamps in the deck since that clashes with Uro's escape cost. We want to be able to always escape an Uro on turn four, and if we have a basic swamp in play, that's going to be pretty tricky. So we've got two basic islands instead, and then we've got all 12 shock lands with Breeding Pool, Overgrown Tomb, and Watery Grave, and then a couple check lands too with four Drowned Catacombs, four Woodland Cemeteries, and two Hinterland Harbors. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Yurion deck, and yeah, we've got a decent hand. If we're very lucky, we could be attacking with an Uro on turn 3. And there we go. Turn 2 Lazav, turn 3 potentially turn it into an Uro. Opponent on a Sultai Field of the Dead deck, presumably, so we might see a Grow Spiral. I'll attack for one and play Lazav. It's gonna be an Omen of the Sea instead, combo is nicely with Yorion. And yeah, we'll uh, randomly mill a Creeping Chill and deal three to our opponents. No ghouls in the graveyard to get back just yet. Cultivates, our opponent's ramping. And let's turn Lazav into the Elder Giants. I didn't draw any additional lands to put in play, sadly. Migration path still ramping. If our opponent can play an Ugin next turn, that could be problematic. Now this could be a spot where we want to chart a course discarding a Silver Smote Ghoul. And then if I draw land I could chart a course again, or I could just play Supplier and Secret Keeper to put more stuff in the graveyard. Could also just play Timur it Calls the Dead. We've got options. I think I want to start by chart a coursing so I can discard the Ghoul. And then I'm probably just going to Supplier plus mill myself with the Secret Keeper here. So we'll attack with everyone. Sadly drew the creeping chill, so I was better off milling myself first. And then we're hoping to hit another silver smote ghoul here. We did find a demonic embrace. All right, let's see if our opponent has an Ugin. Emergent Ultimatum instead. All right. They can search up Ugin with that, but they could do some damage. So let's see. Peer into the Abyss plus Tutelage essentially kills me. So we can give them both a dose. So I guess we give them Omniscience and Tutelage. So we'll shuffle the Peer into the Abyss back. And hope they don't have more powerful cards in hand, they get to cast for free here. Opponent has their own Uro. Fail wishes, alright, that should kill us here. 
get masterminds acquisition, acquisition for another acquisition. And then they have Scholar of the Ages to get them both back. Get a thousand year storm. And that should wrap things up. Well, we got close here. If I still had three Creeping Chills in my library, then I could have given my opponent Tutelage and Peer into the Abyss, and then if they mill me, we would have dealt nine damage and killed them before we actually died to drawing from an empty library. So that's unfortunate here. And then they probably have a big burn spell to close out the game. Inescapable Blaze will do it. GG's. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a pretty terrible hand. Double creeping chill is not what we want to see. All right, I guess we'll keep this. Bottom the creeping chill. We've got secret keeper to mill ourselves and then a ghoul we can just play. All right, supplier, is that better than secret keeper? I guess I can mill myself and then next turn play secret keeper and supplier. So far, nothing too special. So we're facing the Gruul deck. Which I've found to be a winnable matchup. We've got enough random blockers early on, and then the late game of Uro is pretty hard to beat for them. And speak of the devil. We're happy discarding a ghoul to a charter course. And we've got enough cards in graveyard to escape Uro on turn four. So I'm happy if they stomp Secret Keeper. This turn we'll start with Supplier. And then I could attack with the Secret Keeper to just draw two, but I actively want to discard Ghoul. Pass a turn, and next turn Uro will bring two Ghouls alongside it. Alright, make that three. Now Creeping Chill doesn't get back the ghouls if it happens in the opponent's turn, since the ghoul specifically mentions your turn, but uh, that's okay. And just get rid of some lands, keep enchantments and creatures in the graveyard. And we'll put this in play tapped. And I'm happy trading Uro for Questing Beasts. Although they might have an Ember Cleave, in which case I probably want to make different blocks. So they can cleave the Goblin, but then we still trade for it at least. Suppose blocking Pelt Collector made a little bit more sense as it can pick up counters, unlike the goblin there. All right, so where do we want to begin? Attack with all the ghouls. Points at 12 in the meantime. Can sack the one they block with questing beasts and then still escape Uro. Seems fine. Or I can Timurt calls it dead. 
mill myself with Secret Keeper and block with Ghoul and maybe sack one. But they're gonna equip the Beast, so it's gonna be pretty tricky to prevent the damage from it. So I like being aggressive. Make sure we can still escape Uro here. Embrace also a great one. And then I could put in a breeding pool to mill myself with the secret keeper. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Another Creeping Chill and another Ghoul. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. Yeah, that's usually how the Ghoul matchup goes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Yeah, I guess I'll keep this. Facing a turn one Storm Tamer. So this is the Aura deck with Cure Obsession and a bunch of counter spells. Now counter spells we can potentially fight through if we get our engines going. Alright, it's maybe a blue-red wizard deck instead. They could have a spell pierce, which can counter my Timur calls it dead. So I could just play an Uro instead here and then set up my Lazav to turn into an Uro. That makes more sense to me. And we also get a ghoul back from the graveyard. Pyromancer puts me to 15. Well, at least they didn't have an Autolis. They do have two mana up. So I could play Lazav and turn it into an Uro if I shock myself. Of course the opponent could have Wizard's Lightning. But then I can just not do it until their turn to waste their mana. Which might be worth it. The Ghoul can definitely attack. So we'll start there. And Demonic Embrace. Do I want to draw that? Or mill it? It's definitely a useful card in the matchup. Do I want to pay the 3 life to play it from the graveyard? Not really. So I guess we'll just keep it on top then. And then pass. Opponent also passes. And now it's a bit of a waiting game here with Lazav. Take three. Opponent passes. I think I gotta do it now. Can't really afford to waste three mana. And there's a Wizard's Lightning, as expected. Alright, so we drew the Embrace. Now they might still have that Spell Pierce that we suspect, but I can pay for it. 
put it on the Secret Keeper, makes for a nice blocker. Yeah, I guess that's the course of action here. And then once we're stable, we can easily take over with Double Timmer, it calls it dead. I'll keep the Ghoul back so it can block the Pyromancer. That resolves, and we'll pass the turn. We still have two mana to sacrifice a ghoul here. Eh, hopefully we don't die. And we're at four. And lightning finishes off secret keeper, that's fine. All right, so let's see here. Can escape an Uro. I can just play an Uro. Which would get back Ghoul as well. And then play Timurt Calls a Dead, making a blocker for the Pyromancer. Let's do that. So if we suspect Spell Pierce, I should maybe start here. All right, they didn't seem to have a response. And then we'll exile a Secret Keeper. We will briefly go to two life, but if they had another burn spell, we would have died to them just casting the lightning on our face. So I don't think that's a concern. Next turn, definitely escaping Uro, and our opponent packs it in. They know what's incoming, and they don't have the reach to burn us out. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a decent hand. And there's a Silver Smote Ghoul that we can get back on turn 3 when we play Uro. And then turn 4 I can turn Lazav into an Uro, or I can maybe just escape Uro, we'll see. Alright, and we're facing presumably the Tempered Steel aggressive deck here. Don't need more lands. And Liliana can be a nice answer to a Steel Overseer, and there it is. So, yeah, we're just gonna play Uro here. I could put the Breeding Pool into play untapped and then play a Secret Keeper. Is there a reason to do that? Probably not. And then I guess I could attack for one, but for now the Lazav can maybe hold back a Ginger Brute or force them to pay the one extra mana. So next turn I'm gonna try and kill the Steel Overseer. before it places too many more counters. And then next turn we can get an Uro in play. Keep the ghoul on defense, we can easily get it back later. Might see Ginger Brutes be activated to finish off Liliana. Another Steel Overseer, alright, it's definitely a problem. I'll be even more powerful next time. Another Lazav. 
generally it's better to activate Lazav and then escape Uro, otherwise we might not be able to do it the other way around. Could also attack with this ghoul, but I probably need it on defense more. We drew the creeping chill, that's not really where we want it. Sang the puppet, turn it into a human creature token. And then I'm probably just gonna pass, and then we can sacrifice a ghoul after blocking with it. Ooh, that's gonna hurt. Seven powered ornithopter. So they're getting in for 13 points of evasive damage. So this is where drawing the uh, flying enchantments could be useful. So I'll just sacrifice the ghoul now. Another secret keeper. Chart, of course, could discard Silver Smote Ghoul, and we can get it back for free. Definitely gonna start by just milling myself. Alright, there's the Demonic Embrace. Now the problem is, the Ginger Brute just killed me, so I still need to gain life here. If I gain 6 up to 12, that's not necessarily enough. So as it stands, I'm probably just dead. Yeah, I have to attack with Lazav, I think. And then I could escape an Uro. But then I'm just dead to Ornithopter and Ginger Brutes attacking me. I guess I could attack with Lazav and then put the Embrace on Secret Keeper to chump with. Not sure if that does it, since I can still tap Overseer. Found a land, does that do anything for me? Probably just play it tapped. And I also have to pay 3 life to get this in play. So I can play this discarding another ghoul. Play a Secret Keeper, get double ghoul back, but I'm just dead to the Ginger Brutes here, sadly. Yeah, the second Overseer and all that glitters were a bit unfortunate here. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, nice looking hands. Hoping for a third lands and hoping to just mill another Uro so we can potentially have a Lazav attacking as Uro on turn 3. Alright, and there's Uro, so now we just need a third land and we're in business. Let's see what we're up against. Swamp. And there's a third land. And yeah, I'll keep land 4, although I don't have double green yet, so maybe I need to dig for double green here, so we can maybe escape Uro later. Would still potentially let me play Liliana. So this potentially still worth keeping. Let's see if they have an answer to Lazav. 
opponent passes with two mana. So they might kill Lazav in response, but I think I still go for it. And it's going to be a Grasp of Darkness of all removal spells. Alright, next turn we get to play Liliana. Or we can keep milling with a Supplier, maybe play an Uro. Fenlurker. I guess I'll exile an Uro. We've got one in the graveyard. Alright, so this turn Supplier plus Timurt calls it that. Seems fine. Hope to mill some silver smote ghouls. Uh, double creeping chill instead. And hopefully they don't make me discard Liliana next turn. Obliterator. Alright, that's pretty good against the plan of Uro. But we do have Demonic Embrace, which again is proving to be quite valuable. And of course Liliana can take care of the Obliterator too. Could have maybe kept back one Stitcher Supplier in case they kill my zombie and finish off Liliana. Still missing double green for the escape on Uro, but we will be able to potentially scry into it. Alright, Bone Crusher cleans up Liliana. We're playing a Timur, it calls a death this turn, so I guess I might as well mill the Creeping Chill. But then I might give myself a better chance of milling a Silver Smote Ghoul by bottoming those two. I guess I'll attack. Point's pretty close to dead after we factor in the three damage from Creeping Chill. And then we'll exile Supplier. Still no Silver Smote Ghouls, sadly. And our opponent packs it in. All right. So our turn three Lazav plan didn't quite pan out, but we still had enough to kill our opponent. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Couple cards that we wouldn't mind having in the graveyard instead, but a supplier on turn one can do a lot of good. Get a free Creeping Chill. Don't have anything going on next turn, but then on three we've got Timurets. Hopefully milling a couple of ghouls. Opponent also playing a self-mill deck featuring Emery. Well, trading suppliers benefits both players. There's nothing I can really do out of the graveyard this turn. So I think I'll just wait. And keeping an extra zombie for Timurt calls it that could also be worthwhile. Although I guess trading makes it more likely that I have a creature to exile to Timurt calls it that. All right, turn to Lazav. Mills over Narcomiba. Not our creeping chill.
All right, our opponent is on Grixis. Mox Amber. So is this maybe an Underworld Breach deck? Happy enough discarding Embrace. With her opponent at 10, I might just be interested in casting the Creeping Chill. So, discard another card. I guess I'll discard a Chill and just play Timur Calls of Death, have four lands to escape Uro. And I'll chump. Alright, so I could already escape Uro here. Yeah, it's fine, and then we can discard a land. I've got enough stuff to exile. Sure, we'll just keep land in hand. Next turn we get to Scry, gain a bit of life. Could decide to Demonic Embrace Uro, although they can chump with Narcomoeba. We'll also have attacks. Yeah, I'll take six. They can't quite escape the other Croxa. Now that they have Myra Triton on defense, I might be more interested in embracing Uro. A Wand of Vertebrae. Point is pretty serious about self mill. We drew an embrace. And then if I keep creeping chill on top, I can mill it with Timur, it calls it dead. If I put it seconds, I guess we'll draw the breeding pool with Uro and then I would draw the Creeping Chill next turn. Could just put both on the bottom here. And this turn we can just embrace. Can send in the zombies too. We drew the ghoul, happy to discard it to Croxa. Now they will be able to escape the other Croxa now. But that was gonna happen either way. Probably discard Charter Course if they escape Croxa. Keep Timurt Calls the Dead to keep filling the graveyard. Could also decide to embrace the zombie token, but I think I'm happy enough playing Timurt Calls the Dead here instead. I'll decline here, although against Croxa keeping lands in hand doesn't really accomplish much. So I'll probably end up playing the Breeding Pool anyway. Alright, two more ghouls that are coming back. And just exile any non Silver Smote Ghoul card, basically. 
Alright, triple ghoul. Next turn we can embrace one of them potentially. And that should be game. Unless they can find another Narcomiba. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. So we managed to beat the Grixis self mill deck. Alright, so our Sultai self mill deck performed quite well today. We definitely saw the importance of Demonic Embrace in various matchups, because unlike the Grixis Titan Shift deck from last week, we don't have as many ways to close out the game. We don't have the same damage output as a Priest and Croxa provide, so instead we need to rely on a big flying creature to help us close out the game. And comparing our Sultai deck to the Grixis deck from last week, I would probably still give the advantage to the Grixis deck, just because it has more explosive starts with the turn 3 Call of the Death Dweller, in addition to Lazav turning into a Croxa, or in this case Lazav turning into an Uro. That being said, I could see the Sultai deck being better against a Burn deck, where the life gain matters, or against a very controlling deck, where the Graveyard Recursion from Silver Smote Ghoul is very difficult for them to interact with, compared to some of the synergies in the Grixis deck. There are definitely a lot of ways you can approach the self mill archetype, but if you want to build around Silver Smote Ghoul, I recommend including Creeping Chill and Uro, and then Secret Keeper and Stitcher Supplier are the best one mana enablers, but then there are still a lot of ways you can fill out the deck from there. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.